Welcome back to the big show here in Montreal. It's Alex Belfield talking to the stars of the festival. And trust me, in terms of comedy, they don't come any bigger than Ross Noble. How are you? I'm very well indeed, thanks. I'm a li- I've am a just got up, so I'm a little bit a little bit on the gravelly side. So if anyone's listening at home, I'm thinking, oh, listen to that sexy man. It's because normally I, I start like this and then my voice reaches its uh, where it should be. Uh, by the time I get on stage. So. People will be presuming we're doing this at seven o'clock in the morning if you've just got up, but actually it's about four in the afternoon. <laughs> is, it, is it four already? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's good. Well, the weird thing over here is is that, uh, you know, nobody knows who I am or what I do, which is, it, it makes for an interesting... Uh, um, yeah, it was quite bizarre, actually. I was in... Uh, um, Toronto, I did Toronto just before I came here, and uh, I was in a club and it was... Uh, it was kind of like uh, a comedy club with it was myself and uh, another comic and we were just going down there just to get warmed up and um, I walk on stage and I was in this comedy club wasn't even full and there's all these Canadians kind of just what eh and then uh, but the bizarre thing is in the back of my head the last gig I did before that was on my Australian tour where I played a 10,000 seater arena so I was in this massive venue in Australia and then the next thing I know I'm there in front of a room full of people who have absolutely <laughs> no idea what I do who I which is brilliant because it's the sort I mean there's a lot of amusement because they because you'll make a joke and they'll just kind of go really is that true you know you just make something up and they go hmm so yeah it's great I'm really enjoying it from that point of view because you, you find out if you're funny or not you know because it's very easy to go oh you know everyone's come to see me it's a big night out that you know it's that we're in the room and yeah, and yeah, but when you when you walk out there and I'm like, oh, I wonder what this bloke's like, and then they go, Whoa. Yeah. Do you have little or no ego then? If you're prepared to do what is basically 50 people in a comedy club and then 15,000 in an arena in Britain, is there not an element of you thinking I'm bigger than this? No, not at all. Well, it was an arena in Australia, um, so yeah. But I turned up to a massive arena in the UK. And I went, it's been booked for Australia. You're an idiot. You've got no sense of joke. Um, well, you know, the um, I'd like to think I have no ego, but there again, I did slip into a radio interview, the fact that I just played a 10,000 seat old <laughs> and you're in Australia, so you decide. The, um, <laughs> um, no, it's, well, it's good, isn't it? Keeps you, keeps you, uh, keeps you, gra- as soon as you start thinking that you're, you know, Charlie Big Potatoes, then, uh, you know. Soon, Charlie Big Potatoes? Yeah, Charlie Big Potatoes, <laughs> or Jack the Biscuit, you decide. They were, they were, yeah, they were friends. And, uh, yeah, as soon as you start doing that, that's why it's quite funny, you know, here, you got loads of comics and everyone. You start, you know, you start going, "Oh, look at me! I'm a bit special." At the end of the day, it all comes down to what you do on stage, isn't it? It's not about, it's not about, yeah. Because that's the weird thing here. Um, a lot of the American comedians go um, their credits. You know, it's kind of like before they go on, and it's like uh, he's been on, you know, he he's been on. Uh, a and E's evening at the Improv over seventeen <laughs> times. He was the first man to host the Uptown Comedy Jamboree. You know, he's headlined in Uncle Chuckles House of Laughter. Several, there's all this stuff, you know. And uh, whereas British comics, that you know, when when the Americans go to introduce you, say. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? You know, and you sort of go, tell him I've been on Pebble Mill. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Is it, um, uh, Adam Hills uh, told me a hilarious story. Adam Hills, the Australian comic, he told me this hilarious story. Ask him about this. And the guy said, what, what do you want to be introduced as? And he said, tell them that I won the Golden Wombat award for Australian comedy. And the guys on stage going, this guy won the Golden Wombat. And they just, they, you know, they reel off all the stuff. And uh, yeah, I did, the, um, did a gig the other night in uh, a, a sort of a 10 minute slot getting ready for the gala. And um, the guy just went, okay, I'm, I'm going to bring you on. And this is an American guy. And he, he said, oh, I'm going to introduce you. I said, all right, great. And he sort of went to walk off and I went, oh, 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 oh. Do you not want to know me credits? And he went, oh, yes, sorry, sorry. Why do you want me to tell me? Don't be silly. <laughs> it's interesting as well, because I followed you into that gig. You won't know this. And the guy on the door had no idea who you are and wouldn't believe that your past was genuine and did this great investigation for about 10 minutes trying to find out who you are before he'd let you in. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've turned up at a venue and I'm the act. <laughs> You know what I mean? But um, yeah, yeah, God, that bubbling with laughter. That was hilarious. That was a classic example of, um, uh, yeah, there was half the audience were hysterically laughing and the other half were just staring at me, just going, 
what why what what they, these are these are jokes why isn't he doing yeah it's not surprising because you're so fascinating you have kind of half an act that's written and then the other half where you just ad lib and it's hard to see where that blends isn't it because it's so interesting well the problem is is that when you say it's half written not really um, <laughs> what no sort of what i have is i have kind of ideas and then things that i can get into if i you know like i just i want to play around with but in a in a sort of two and a half hour show full show you, you can kind of can take an idea and you can just kick it around you know like on the monday night you know the a monday night i might go with it in a particular way or you know i might do you know i might do a bit of it you know it's, it's, the, it's they're just kind of rather than sort of writing material just have kind of funny things which most of them just i improvise them and then i go oh i'll go back to that and play with it and see where it goes and then you know see how another audience takes to it so because of that it's kind of yeah I've, I've never got nothing's ever set in stone there's nothing like that's that and that's that and, and i don't know how long an idea is you know like a, a you know what is basically a you know like a funny idea one night it might be five minutes long the next minute it might be like half an hour long and when you've got 10 minutes you sort of you know you go on and you kind of go right there isn't really time to start kicking things around so yeah. i have incredible admiration for you because you appear fearless you may not be inside but when i see you come on a stage for example at the gala last night like you did 10 minutes on stage about the scenery i mean yeah. you can't possibly have written that the uh you know, we had a team of writers in for days and days <laughs> no my favorite thing at the gala last night was my jog please um the um <laughs> fact that john cleese was ill and was taken to hospital he's down at the hospital john cleese is dead no he's not he's resting what do you mean he's resting he's pining for the gala paying it for the gala he's dead mate the um uh yeah that was uh, we, uh, we were backstage beforehand and like i say what what tends to happen here is people they get their 10 minutes spe you know they get their 10 minute uh, uh slot at the gala and then they'll spend they do all these sort of shorter spots and hone it and hone it and hone it and hone it and uh, and then go on and do their ultimate you know knock them dead hey, this is gonna this is really gonna happen it's all i know exactly what's going on set i've never worked like that it's not my thing so um yeah so with the gala last night i just thought well what makes me funny is just sort of is being funny rather than you know the the jokes you know so, so what is it then are you a genius or are you just lazy <laughs> yeah I, I i would go i would say the latter I, I, I think it's easier but then there's a lot of comics who get who go what are you doing that why are you just why are you just winging it like that's to, you know because some some comics get just terrified of changing even a word you know because you get but you know some i can't remember i think it might mean bill hicks just said jokes are just things you say while you're busy being funny <laughs> and that's what i like i like the you know there's two sorts of comics there's funny people who are just funny and just and also to you know and then it's the other sort who just write jokes and are basically actors just seeing the you know but uh you know last night was great you know what it was it's like if i'm having fun the audience is having fun and as soon as i try and as soon as I try and be something I'm not, it just doesn't it doesn't work, you know. So, uh, but it's hilarious watching the um, watching the <laughs> Canadian audiences because they don't know what I'm about. Uh, it's it's hilarious because they literally do just go and other comics as well, like you know, like, where well, you know, like American comics and stuff who are on the bill, just kind of standing there going, but he's just but he's just making this up. Well whatever when the phone call comes in and they say we'd like you to come to montreal to do a room of 100 people when you are doing big arenas let's face it you're you're up there with the biggest and the best right now is your instinct to right say now i like that right now well, it doesn't but, last forever but, does yeah, it? Give it give it time <laughs> give it time you see yeah Can we all keep, fade yeah keep peddling that nonsense <laughs> i used to be on radio four <laughs> now i'm sat here talking yeah, to you now i'm here with you yeah <laughs> when the call comes in and they say do you want to come over here i mean you can't be doing it for the money because it can't pay as well as doing 15,000 in an arena when you're the star is this for you to learn or just have fun or to kind of have a bit of a laugh at the industry where you go I'm big enough I can do this uh, yeah it's, pu it's purely <laughs> purely for the um, yeah for the I mean one thing is I mean obviously I want to be I want you know I want to get to the point where I can play 
uh, you know I've never been to America I've been to, I came to Just for Laughs about 10 years ago and went oh this doesn't really suit my suit my style I won't bother but then the only reason so I mean th th this year I've got my own show so I'm doing a, a, a solo show which is a bit longer and because they went oh you you know we'll, we'll give you a room and you can do your own show I kind of went yeah that's that's why I agreed to do it you know so um, but with that you know they went but we'd like you to do 10 minutes at a gala and here's a load of gigs to get you ready for that so but no it's it's purely about the uh, everything i do is is it's it's all about the enjoyment that's number one top of the list you know like um you know if i was doing it uh if i was doing it for the money or you know for the fame or whatever you know i wouldn't i wouldn't have done I wouldn't be doing it the way that I've done it, you know. I'd be, I'd be on Saturday night. I'd cut, I'd cut my hair. I wear a suit, and I'd be on Saturday night TV, um, you know, appealing to, uh, try, you know, trying to appeal to nanas, and and I think that's kind of, you know. But but I know that if I was doing that, you know, I'd be, uh, you know, I'd be, you know, stood there regurgitating the stuff that all my writers had written, and we were, you know. But then you get you're dead behind the eyes, and it's kind of. Yeah, it's just it's all about just having a laugh, you know. And this this is, you know, it's a laugh, you know, because you just sort of go, you know, if I had to, if I had to swap, if I had to swap doing my gigs and my tours for doing ten minute spots and <laughs> playing to people that didn't know who I was, probably not. You get a proper job. Yeah, I, I I probably would go. You know what? Not so much. A couple of things before we go. I think I'm pretty fluent on the air, but there are times when I open the mic and I haven't got a clue what I want to say, whether I can be bothered to say anything. Yeah. You've got the kind of show that's like that, where you've got to be quick, you've got to think, yeah, you've got to yeah, think. It's yeah. not rehearsed. Are there ever moments when you look at an audience, you think, I've not got a clue what I'm going to say next? No, the trick is to open your mouth, start talking, and let the, <laughs> and let the funny happen. And Hope that, for the best. That's, that, that really is. It's one of those things. It's a strange thing. It's sort of like you, uh, you sort of talk and your brain kind of... Yeah, you, your brain. Well, what's weird is usually, if you think about it, your brain, usually mo works faster than your mouth, you know. So sometimes it's the opposite. <laughs> sometimes I've got too many things I'm trying to say at once. Sometimes I'll have, because I'll have like several different things that I want to talk about. I'll I do this thing sometimes where I'll actually halfway through a sentence, I'll I'll combine two words. <laughs> so say like um like uh, menu and pen, you'll just sort of go men. And we will go, well, why didn't you say men? And it'll just be like, oh, because we're getting to pen and menu, but it's like, it's men, and it just, you know, or, uh, you know, I'm trying to say, chair and carpet, you know, you'll go carpet. You know, what? <laughs> just because you're going, oh, that, because it's it's almost like you're going, I want to get to the thing that I've thought of, and you just go bang, and we will just go, what's a carpet? And then that in itself sparks off something, and you, and then you start, you know, I'll start talking about charpets and uh, you know some kind of Moroccan instrument that's being on earth, the charpet, and uh, and then you just sort of go in that direction. But then of course the problem is, is that then everyone's going, oh, I didn't know there was an instrument called a charpet, and uh, but at the same time they're going, but what happened to the chair and the carpet? So then there's two different. So that's the way it works, yeah. So very rarely do I kind of find myself going, eh, nothing, yeah. And very funny, the physicality on stage. Wouldn't it be easy just to be Jimmy Carr and stand there with a microphone and not move? Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, it would. It's always easier to be Jimmy Carr in any. Doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what, what you do in life. Jimmy Carr is the default setting for having a. Um, yeah, well, yeah, but that's what's brilliant about it. Like, you know, I, um, y you know, it, it's quite weird. Obviously, the style I do is it's so completely removed from uh, what Jimmy does. But, you know, I love it. You know, I sort of, um, you know, I think that's what that's what's brilliant about Stan. Like, Jimmy on stage doing his one-liners is Jimmy is Jimmy off stage, you know? He stands, and that's what's, you know, and, and that's the mark of a brilliant comic is a person who can go on stage and obviously the heightened version, he doesn't stand with a clipboard in the bar going, <laughs> evening, 
I have another joke here. <laughs> um, th- well, he does actually. What am I talking about? Um, yeah, it's a heightened version because obviously, like, if you're talking to one person, you know, if I was to talk as loud as I do on stage and 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 was a, and gesticulate and you know, um, the, you know, one person, it, it would it would be it would be borderline physical assault. You know, you'd be locked so, up, wouldn't you? Let's yeah, face exactly. It. People would just be like, <laughs> I'll stand at the bar. Um, yeah, but that's the mark of a brilliant comic is the fact that, you know, if you talk to Jimmy, he will say, you know, he'll stand there and, you know, you see the, the one of the best things to watch, and this is the, if you get a chance to do it later, watch Jimmy when a slightly odd uh, punter comes up to him, you know, like one of these sort of like, I just watch him stand there and very politely just just chuck out little one-liners taking the mickey out of them. And um, so, yeah, so I, th- but I think, you know, that's... Um, uh, it would be in terms of I'd probably I wouldn't be as tired uh, and, and I wouldn't have to dry clean my gig shirts all the time because of the sweat um, but at the same time yeah that's what I mean the, the, the mark of a really great comic is somebody who can sorry I was tapping the desk there providing percussion <laughs> the, um, yeah the mark of a great comic is somebody that, that is just a heightened version of themselves you know so uh that's what's great doing about doing uh the the britcom show there is that um normally when i tour it's just me go on there and you don't get to see anyone else you know but it's quite it's uh so doing that last night you're standing in the wings watching everyone go, it's a good show <laughs> oh i'm on here <laughs> Yeah. Ross Noble, thank you so much for talking to me. You're a massive star around the world and a huge arena touring comic in Britain. Can I do a bit of business for you? Have you got a website or something I can plug? Uh, yeah, if you like, yeah. Um, uh, what is it? So, yeah, rossnoble.co.uk. Why did it take you so long to think of that? It's got your name in it. Um, no, you know what it is? It's because, <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you why. Because you said, because I, I thought people would be misleaded. Because the, uh, misleaded? What? Misled. <laughs> um, leaded up a wrong path. Um no, because they, yeah, because I just did the arena tour in Australia and I went, oh, now people are going to think that I'm doing the arena tour in the UK and they're going to look for the arena brochures, but I'm doing the West, I'm six weeks in the West End of London. So, yeah, so don't, so, yeah, so don't go down to uh, the Enorma Dome expecting <laughs> me to be there in the UK. If you're in, if you're listening to this on the web and you're in Australia, well, don't go there either because I've just finished the tour. But in the UK, I'm going to be in a normal size theatre in the West End. Yes. So, but it's rossnoble.co.uk. Unless you're in Australia and then it's rossnoble.com.eu. But if you want to log on to the australia.com.eu one from the UK, that's one of the benefits of the World Wide Web. All right, Ross, we better go. Thank you so much for talking to me. It's been a real pleasure and uh, good luck with everything. Thanks for having me.